How long does it take you to revise a certain chapter? Most students read the chapter and create short notes. But if you revise the short notes, it will use up a considerable brain capacity. And the recall is often difficult and incomplete, since our memory of text information is not notably strong. In other words, by harding short notes is not efficient. Let me show you how I use visual mnemonics or picture mnemonics to solve this problem. Visual mnemonics use up only a small memory capacity. Our brain processes visual stimulation 60,000 times faster than text information. Therefore, it is the fastest form of information to recall. The loss of information during recall is close to zero if you combine visual mnemonics with spaced repetition. All right, so let's create a visual mnemonic or a picture mnemonic with me. For this example, I'm using the Wikipedia chapter on dengue fever to study. As always, the link is in the description. The first step is to read the chapter and understand it. If you can teach the concepts to a friend, pet, or an imaginary class of students, then you have understood the concepts. The second step is to create short notes. If it's unlikely to be tested in an exam, omit those points. I'm omitting these points as I believe they are neither high yield nor likely to be tested. So here are my short notes. Now look at the symptoms. Fever, headache, vomiting, and body aches are common to most mosquito-borne virus diseases. I can omit them because there's no need to buy heart facts that are common sense. The only symptom I want to remember is the characteristic rash. Now let's start drawing the visual mnemonic. First, select a theme. My theme is Ancient Egypt. The Aedes aegypti reminds me of an Egyptian mosquito. It will help me remember the name Aedes aegypti. And since Egypt is a subtropical country, I'll remember that it's prevalent in tropical areas. The mosquito is female, since it is the female mosquito that vectors the virus. I'll add red spots all over her body to remember the characteristic dengue rash. DNA is a double helix structure, but RNA has only one strand. That's what this pendant is for. The female mosquito is carrying the RNA virus. The pentagon represents the five different serotypes of the virus. Now, how can we add the triad of characteristics in dengue hemorrhagic fever to this diagram? I will use this point to highlight the importance of understanding the concepts before creating short notes. The blood is made of 55% fluid and 45% cells. The fluid is called plasma. The main types of blood cells are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. In dengue fever, the platelets are targeted by the virus. Once the platelet counts drop below a critical value, the plasma starts to leak from blood vessels into the abdomen and chest. In later stages, the patient starts to bleed into the skin and mucosal membranes. Dengue hemorrhagic fever is characterized by the triad of low platelets, plasma leakage, and bleeding. When you understand the concepts, it gives meaning to the raw facts. It makes it much easier to retain in the memory. Okay, the mosquito is drinking blood from a cup. The cup will demonstrate the triad in dengue hemorrhagic fever. The drink is arranged in two layers, plasma and cells. And there's a starfish in the blood. Starfish looks like a platelet to me. <laughs> it represents low platelets in dengue hemorrhagic fever. The plasma is spilled out to represent the leakage of plasma. Blood is leaking from the bottom to represent bleeding. With one cup and one mosquito, we have successfully demonstrated dengue hemorrhagic fever. It's not rocket science to understand that if the plasma leakage and bleeding continue, the patient's blood pressure is going to drop. We call it shock. That's the most severe stage of dengue. This stage is called dengue shock syndrome. The other hand of the mosquito is touching an electric wire and just about to receive a big electric shock. Did you notice what I did there? Two hands represent the two severe complications in dengue, hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock. All right, now you have successfully created the visual mnemonic, but the video is not over. You need to revise the visual mnemonic in timely intervals. We call this technique spaced repetition. 
Don't forget to watch my video about it. You should include all potential high yield facts, but still there is a chance you could miss a few. That's why you need to do practice questions. In my case, I have missed one important point about dengue fever. It turns out that examiners love to test your knowledge regarding the correlation between serotypes and the resulting immunity. By doing practice questions, I was able to reinforce what I missed. Please press the like button and leave a comment. It'll help me to rank this video top in YouTube search. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Take care.